last year when you guys went on this same road trip to the Pacific Northwest, you guys came up obviously over two. This year you guys go back there, get two wins. Was this kind of exercising the demons of some sorts for you and maybe for the team as well? Yeah, I'm not sure I'd go that deep, but um, no question about it that it was an important swing for us for a number of reasons. Um, one, trying to stay in a conference race, you know, and uh, stay connected to the top teams record-wise. And then no question we talked about, <clears throat> you know, what this swing did in our season last year and how we kind of came apart at the seams a little bit against Utah Valley and, and then had a tough turnaround game and lost in overtime to Seattle. And obviously a lot of those guys weren't in the program, but um, we talk about our program a lot, regardless if you're with us last year or not, of, of what this means to us and in our current team and our program in general. And so we emphasize these games a lot. You know, we, personally, uh, it was important uh, to me as well. It was two places that we hadn't won yet. And um, I, th I thought it was crucial that we go in and, and beat these teams on their home court. And, um, and our guys bought into it, you know. And, and we talked about Utah Valley Street, you know, the fact that they had won 22 in a row. And, you know, we talked about that a lot and that we want to be the team to, to snap their streak. And that would, you know, be a significant win for us to be able to do that to, you know, to, to their program in terms of uh, how many other people have went in there and lost, you know, that many times in a row. And obviously it's a tough place to play. Uh, and we, uh, we were able to accomplish it. So um, we were excited about the trip and uh, obviously very thrilled that we won both. Just watching, uh, just watching on the web stream, honestly, it seemed like down the stretch against Utah Valley, you guys really executed um, everything really well. And what was just kind of your vantage point as a coach on the sidelines for that? Yeah, after watching the video, it was impressive. Like you said, we made some big shots down the stretch, um, and they did too. You know, it was back and forth. Uh, both teams were making shots, and you know, we make a big one. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, that, that may do it. And then, boom, they come down and, and score against us. So as well as we executed offensively down the stretch, we weren't able to get the necessary stops to kind of put them away. And, you know, they were hanging around. But uh, I thought the play of the game was a, a shot that wasn't taken. You know, Eli Chua had the ball in front of our bench on, on our lane side. And um, the shot clock was running down, I think, 10, 9, 8. And, and he kind of whirled around and, and couldn't get an angle. And, but he didn't shoot it. You know, a lot of guys will just force it up and, and beg for a foul in that situation. I thought that was a huge play, um, that, he, that he kept his dribble alive and he kept pivoting. And then he found AJ. And then AJ came off the ball screen and hit the three. It was a, was a, a huge shot for us. So I was real proud of, of Eli to, to not shoot that shot and understand that, that we'll, you know, we had enough time left on the shot clock to survive that, that uh, possession and get a great shot. So I was real proud of him for doing that. Speaking of Eli, just named WAC Player of the Week. I mean, maybe just, uh, what did you think? Obviously, he played well to, to win WAC Player of the Week. But how important was his, this stretch with Yvonne kind of under the weather this past week for him to play that well? Yeah, he played great, you know, and most importantly, he played great on both ends. I mean, obviously, you know, the stats is what earns people awards more times than not. But um, Eli's become a, a very vocal defender. And from my experience and my perspective, when you have your bigs being the ones that talk the most, you have a chance to to have better defensive possessions because, you know, they get to see the whole court. You know, the guards don't have eyes in the back of their heads and don't necessarily see what's happening all the time. And they're kind of like, the, the, you know, the free safety, if you will, or the goalie. And um, when you got bigs that are willing to talk and help that way, it really uh, relieves some stress for everybody else. And um, he's been, been doing it more and more and more. And we've encouraged him to continue to do it more because Eli's a high level IQ player. He understands the game and, and knows how to play. And now he's, you know, not only talking and, um, on the defensive end, but he's playing with more confidence offensively. And, you know, our guys see that and are feeding him the ball in his, his spots that he really likes it. And um, he's taking great shots. I mean, he only missed a handful of shots all weekend and, and he had two double doubles. And, and uh, but again, I think the most impressive thing uh, for us inside the program is is how he's defending and how he's talking and and uh, he's kind of anchoring our defense, if you will. Coach, you got to play a lot of guys Thursday and maybe rest some of your starters a little bit Thursday when you built a big lead. Did that help you Saturday, especially down the stretch? Yeah, in my mind, you know, I, I wanted to play AJ about 
20 minutes Thursday was kind of the goal. I didn't talk to him about that, but in, in my mind, that's kind of where I wanted to keep him. Um, he played 22. He played a little more minutes in the first half that I uh, was kind of surprised when I saw the stat sheet. But um, And then Yvonne, you know, um, didn't play as many minutes, but that was more due to how well Eli played. You know, those guys kind of flip-flop. And uh, if you look at the whole season stats, they play very similar minutes, but we don't play them together. Um, so, that, you know, when one's playing well, the other one doesn't play as many minutes. And, you know, they've been great about it. You know, there's been times when, you know, like at a recent homestand, Eli, um, excuse me, Yvonne played so well, and Yvonne, or Eli didn't play as many minutes. And But he was great. He understood it. And he was about winning, and he was great about it. And uh, Yvonne's the same way. He, he realized how well uh, Eli was playing and what kind of rhythm we, he was in. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I'm not in his body, but I'm still not sure if he's completely back to 100%. Yvonne's a type of athlete that he needs conditioning daily to, to keep up with his win and his cardio. And, you know, obviously he missed a bunch of days, so I still think he's finding his win that way. For the second time in three weekends, you'll get a whole week off between games. What does the extra two off days allow you to do in terms of preparation? Well, it's perfect for us this time, um, more because of, you know, starting school last Wednesday and, you know, we had to leave Wednesday morning, so we missed, you know, the first three days of school with, with the road trip, and then obviously today is a holiday, so we don't have school, they don't have school today either, so it's a great opportunity for us to kind of, you know, get our heels in the ground academically, you know, catch up. Uh, from, from the start, Wednesday of being gone, and, and just take a deep breath and, and just try not to get behind. You know, we talk a lot about to our guys academically about trying to play with a lead and not play from behind. And uh, so, obviously, with being gone, you know, some guys are a little behind. And I think we need this extra time. We were off yesterday. We're going to take off tomorrow. We'll practice this afternoon and then get back on a regular schedule starting Wednesday. But um, I think it's huge for them um, to get healthier, um, just to kind of take a deep breath. And, and probably most importantly is just, you know, dig in academically and, and try to get back into, you know, that mindset of, of you know, hey, we, we got to go to school and we got to do our work. And, you know, we had almost six weeks where that wasn't the case. And so they get in a little bit of a routine where it's just, you know, ball, you know, 24-7. And now obviously we're back to, uh, you know, being in school. So I think it's a really good timing for us. I think it was Jason two weeks ago kind of asked you, like, obviously you didn't want to be peaking right in the middle of the season, but you said you also – want to be playing well at all times. Are they getting to where you kind of wanted them to be at this point of the season right now? We're playing better, uh, especially offensively. You know, our numbers are, are really, really good right now. Um, you know, our, our efficiency numbers are, are well. We're shooting the ball better from the field, from the three and from the free throw line. You know, I, I like to think that, you know, all those extra shooting, t shooting uh, opportunities that we took advantage of over break is paying off for us. You know, I tell them all the time, it's, you know, it's, you don't get instant gratification every time. You know, if you get in the gym one day, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to shoot great the next. But, you know, if you do it, you know, for uh, consecutive days and then consecutive weeks, then eventually it will pay off for you. And I think that's, you know, what's going on a little bit at the free throw line. Hopefully it will continue. Um, it's a little bit harder to shoot as many free throws on their own time, obviously, with school um, back in session. But hopefully they can carve out some time to, to do a little bit on their own. But uh, we're definitely playing better. Um, you know, even though defensively, I mean, our numbers still, you know, aren't where we want them to be. But, you know, numbers don't always tell all the truth. I, I know we're playing better defensively. When I watch the video, the, the on-ball pressure and the intensity is better. We're talking a little bit better. You know, we've defended uh, defensive rebounding well all year long. Hopefully that will continue. But, um, you know, we still got a long way to go. I mean, that's the best thing about our team right now is, is we're playing better, but we're not close to, to peaking or, or playing our best from watching the video. We had tons of breakdowns, and, and uh, we'll have all week to get better. You know, what's a you know, scouting report yet on UTRGV? Uh, I haven't dove into them yet, um, but I've watched them on video because of a common opponents. But my brain doesn't work that way when I'm watching, you know, um, for instance, Grand, Bale or Grand Canyon playing UTRGV. I watch just Grand Canyon. I just, I just not. Some guys can do it all. I can't, but um, but I've seen them, and, and you know they play a lot of guys, and, and uh, they look to be you know similar to what they've been last, excuse me, in the past or last year from my perspective, where they're very athletic and will trap you and press you and try to turn you over. And um, so we haven't played a team quite like that for a while, so we'll have to you know get back to practice in that way. Coach Trev played well Thursday. Did he kind of show you a glimpse into what he can be offensively at least? 
You know, he's got such a big upside. You know, he's, he's the talent's there. You know, he's got a live body. Uh, he's bouncy. You know, he's skilled. Um, you know, he's still learning our system. You know, we got here late and, um, you know, he became eligible late. And so, you know, he was always on the scout team and wasn't with us as often when we broke it down. So uh, the learning curve has been steep for him. Um, but I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, before the end of the season, you know, he's got a chance to, to really help us because of his body and his skill set. You know, he's, he's never been asked to defend. This is all foreign to him. He's always been the leading scorer. He's always been able to shoot any shot that he's wanted. And so shot selection is new for him. You know, defending the way we want to defend is new for him. But a credit to him, he's, he's really trying. You know, I'm proud of him how he's, he's trying to buy into to what we're doing and the team concept. And it's not just about Trev and scoring and, and getting his numbers. And, um, you know, hopefully he'll continue to do that. And I think, you know, he has a chance to really help us. Hopefully it's sooner than later. Um, definitely next year I expect him to, to be a really, really good, good play for, player for us. But hopefully it will be before the, the season ends where he can get comfortable with everything we're trying to do.